Okay, so having uh, extracted a model from a CT scan and then decimated that in Blender, we're now going to use it to do some FEA. Uh, so you can see the previous two videos on what we've done there. All I've done since the Blender video is I actually further decimated it using it the Quadriflow remesh uh, to just get it down to 10,000 faces. It just makes this a lot easier. So let's create a new model in FE Bio Studio. We're going to do Structural Mechanics. Then we're going to import our geometry. Blender exports as a binary STL. And there we are. And so I went to the effort in Blender of arranging, uh, of rotating this so that I had the distal condyles kind of flat and the, the femoral head <clears throat> oriented so that I can apply loads and fixes quite easily um, using the axes of the world. So the first thing we need to do is we need to convert this into a mesh and we can use TetGen or Shell Mesh here. I'm just going to use default properties, parameters. There we go. So we've meshed that. We need to create a material. We're just going to use a simple elastic material and let's see, Neohookian, I think that'll do for now. Density one. I'm just going to slap in some uh, generic numbers. Of course, if you're doing this uh, for real, you want to research accurately what the Young's modulus Poisson ratio and general properties are. Let's create a load. Oh, first we need to select our object and make sure we apply the material to this part. Then we're going to create a load. We're going to create a nodal load. And we're going to go in the Z direction. And I'm going to apply minus 10 newtons. There we go. We're going to collect, select uh, connected components. So like this, and if we hold shift, we can select some others. Let's have a look down like this. So I'm just going to collect the end there for the purposes of this. And then we add those nodes to the selection. Then we're going to go to boundary conditions. We're going to add a boundary condition, a fixed displacement, and I'm going to fix basically the end of the bone here in X, Y, and Z. Uh, let's get rid of all of those and add what we've got selected. There we go. We now need another step. So we're going to add an analysis step, a structural mechanics, done. Uh, I'm going to let that go a bit lower. These parameters, you're going to need to play with those. You're going to need to look into the research on this um, to get things accurate and what they should be. I'm just running through sort of the process of how we do things. So now that's done, we need to save our project. Then we can run FE Bio once it's finished saving. There we go. Run FE Bio. <laughs> Save. Save. Yep. Yeah. Okay. FE Bio. Run FE Bio. There we go. I've been using the 3.0 format. Let's run. And so you'll see that this is uh, working through various uh, iterations. And we've got normal termination. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see error termination. Now, it doesn't automatically go to your results, so you have to double-click model over here. And then I'm going to turn off uh, the grid pattern using this button here. And then we want to see you know, where it's deformed, where the stress is, and so on. So we can visualize the deformation by playing up here. And you can see that bone is, is bending over. And we can color it. And let's start by coloring it according to total displacement. Of course, there's no displacement at the beginning. And maybe we'll take a look at effective stress as well. So we can see that building up in the side there as it bends, as you would expect. We're also getting a bit of stress at the bottom. So that's how we run through a FEA analysis in FE Bio Studio. Uh, obviously, you need to research in great detail what material properties should be, what kind of mesh resolution you need, and so on. Hope this is helpful.